What is going on everyone and welcome back to episode 12. We're getting down to the last couple of episodes now. So I hope you guys are enjoying this PES 2013 Master League. Let me know if you want to see another season of this lads or let me know would you like to see me move on to maybe PES 16 and do a full Master League in that with an option file and stuff like that. Or let me know if you want to see another season of this or let me know if you want me to stop doing it and just do more eFootball or whatever. So in this game lads, this was I thought going to be like the biggest most kind of like hardest match for me all season but this kind of game sums up PES 2013 because it just had it all man it had it all it had really bad defensive play it had some really good goals and we know what Arsenal did to us in the first round uh in this match the first fixture that we played one of two back I think it was in episode maybe six or seven um but we get off to an unbelievable start here with Sammy Eto'o but it just felt like in certain games, right, in certain games that you're playing in PES 2013, if you guys go back and play it, in a Master League, there are certain games where the AI just feels super passive, they don't tackle you, they don't really want to look at that for a goal, as that's probably one of my best team goals of the game, and De Bruyne is going to pop his head up again later on in this episode, but he has been, you know, exemplary for me in terms of linking the play, and I think that he has the potential, I'd love to see where he ends up in like three or four years, because he has some shot on him and he's just an unbelievable player to actually be in the right position now right from the kickoff from them conceding that second goal Riziki actually gets in with an unbelievable goal as well so it was goals all around really good finish from Mia with a toe really good finish with Riziki and then we got the, the soft enough one there as well but um well it was a lovely worked move but it was a simple tap in but from here I turn him over in possession De Bruyne again getting the assist to Waza back into De Bruyne and he absolutely rattles at home to give us the lead and we're up 3-1 against the league leaders they haven't lost in so many games we need to beat Arsenal and we need to win every other game and hope that they slip up for us to actually win the league I didn't think it would be possible what about this for a strike lads De Bruyne with his second of the day unbelievable he's not finished there though but De Bruyne has been I think one of the signings of the season for me in just his general link up play him and Eto have been game changers I know Ronaldinho a lot of you guys were complaining when I sold him to see where he could go but I think just for his age and everything like De Bruyne even though he doesn't have amazing stats um, you know he is an exceptional player Eto again here look at the speed of Eto this is the difference what I'm talking about speed finishing precision power just absolute turns the Arsenal defence inside out from that interception and from here we're going to score one of my favourite goals so far in this Master League we will be doing a goal of the season we're going to have a vote on that as well but this is probably it I mean this is when confidence is high and I'm feeling like I'm 15 or 16 again playing this game for the first time and thinking that I'm a beast at the game De Bruyne slams it in for his hat-trick what I don't think you'll see a better hat-trick than that and he also had the assist as well at the start. Um, I don't think you'll see a better hat-trick than that personally. But yeah, just pick that one out. Absolutely rattles it into the top-hand corner of the net. Bullet. And uh, De Bruyne is that type of player. I think Les that could, could be one of those players that is just a monster in a couple of seasons' time. So they had a couple of simple chances. But genuinely, lads, I did not think that I would beat Arsenal 6-1, right? That puts a huge huge bit of pressure on them because obviously I'm still a couple of points behind them a point or two behind them but yeah they'd still need to slip up the destiny is in their own hands obviously um but yeah they do need to slip up we are playing against Reading we can't afford to slip up here lads but as I said against Arsenal right we just beat Arsenal who are the best team by a mile in the Premier League they're into the Champions League semi-final they've been scoring so many goals for fun we beat them 6-1 and then in this game it was just torture i mean i could not get an opening on goal we get a scrappy one there um sammy Eto gets it in against reading we could not really get an opening and from there like the minute i scored i intercepted him again and as i said the flood gets open once you score the first goal the flood gets open and you do get second and third chances that you just have to take lads you just have to pot, pot you know to pot them home um and then in the 60th minute as well they get a scrappy one back which seems to be always the way so again it just goes to show you the difference and the variety some people will like that kind of like challenge in the ai and the fact that they score goals from corners and freeze and stuff and get results from you i mean i've left a lot of points on the table that i should have should have been able to pick off and from here i forgot that scozy was on a yellow he goes straight through the back 
um, of Mariapa, I think it was. Absolute butcher bay. And Scozzi is going to be taking an early shower there. But we do hold on for the win. Next up, we have got West Ham United in one of our last games. We will be doing a special episode of um, episode 13, which will be the season finale, which is coming up after this. But it was, again, going from beating Arsenal 6-1 and literally scoring every time I touched the ball or every time I got a chance on goal. This is a lovely work move there, a lovely finish from Janino. And... I think that's my gamble of uh, getting rid of Ronaldinho and getting Janino and De Bruyne. This, the amount of important goals that they're scoring for me are just massive. And Sammy Eto'o, I can't say enough about him, lads. He's just been a game changer for me. I know Rooney is the main man. He's the player of the season for us by a mile. But I think Sammy Eto'o, what a striker he has been. So we do keep the pressure on Arsenal as we head into the last couple of games. It is going to go down to the last game. I think it's looking like goal difference is good. We haven't conceded that many goals. We've drawn a lot of games. So we're hoping to be able to pull this one out against Newcastle. And as I keep repeating, we saw that result against Arsenal Leds where I was scoring for fun. We saw earlier in the season against Tottenham where I was scoring five, six, seven goals. Against Chelsea, scoring four, five goals. And in this game against Newcastle, who are like a lower bottom team, I was just absolutely struggling big time. Like, it, you know, 50th minute on the clock. 50 minutes on the clock, we get a chance. Sharp turn from Rooney. He has been sensational this season for us. He's rescued us time and time again. And he just bangs it there in again. And he comes up clutch when he's needed to. And then look from here, lads. Look at the formation that I'm playing here. Nanny, Janino, Ashley Young all down. I just went for it. Because I know if I lose or draw this match, it's game over. Arsenal will be too far ahead that I won't be able to catch them unless they, you know, have an absolute disaster at the end of the season. But I need to at least draw or win this game, and I need to win it. And the amount of space that I got here with Rooney in the 87th minute from that kickoff and the finish home, lads, I was sweating taking that one. Um, not just with the heat that was outside, but also with this one. But I've been really enjoying playing the games, um, and I hope you guys are enjoying kind of like the, the analysis type highlight packages as well. I know you guys will like the live com one at the end because it's a full uh, full day of the of the last episode, um, which is live. But yeah, I like mixing it up sometimes and having a highlights package because it means I can get more games in. I don't want this series and I didn't want this series being, you know, like a, a, a 25, 30 episode uh, series because obviously I know you guys like to watch other stuff and you know e-football and stuff but um, yeah from there we obviously just let the game run out and we decided to like we were going to obviously just try and hold on 88 minutes on the clock we're just thinking to ourselves listen just hold on don't let the don't concede a goal Berbatov with a brilliant press Gigan press from Berbatov he slides it back in here Rooney dispossesses with the shoulder charge comes back out keeper picks it up and then I'm thinking okay let's just put a bit of pressure on terrible throw out slots it back into Burba what a touch from Burba and the finish is there by Rooney in the back of the net and we are sailing through lads absolutely sailing through this game now 3-1 it's game over I think we've rescued this match from the clutches of defeat it's been a sensational performance from the boys again and they just really want the league now I put all my eggs in the Champions League basket didn't work out for me I probably should have concentrated more and um, and rested a few players for the league but we are after creeping in the game is after letting us back in to be able to have a stamp and put our own destiny in our own hands and the referee blows the whistle there as we get confirmation of the results so I think we have one more game left in this one but you can see it's just the domination lads again Rooney taking the honours as the top rated player and you can see here in the main menu fixture 36 We've got two more games. It's going to go down to the wire. As you can see there, again, Arsenal do keep up their pace. They've got one point ahead of us. Their goal difference is quite okay as well. Obviously, mine is better, but I'm not too concerned about that as of right now. I just need Arsenal to slip up. Will they slip up or won't they? Who knows? But everywhere else looks pretty set in stone as we play Wigan. And I think this was probably one of my most challenging games that I played all season. And that might surprise you guys listening but yeah it was it was just a crazy game man and it, again it's it's one of these things that like from here right six minutes on the clock ball comes in here from across or from a free kick true ball true over the top disaster at the back and he slots it home back here by picking it out past such a weird choice of you know shooting and passing and scoring a goal and from here we can just literally as if they were trying to win the league 
Look at Bubba. He's got a new look, lads. He's gone great. We'll get into that in a later episode. But from here, I did get chances and chances galore. You can see the pace of Sammy Eto here, lads. Squares it to Rooney and Rooney slots it home. We get back into, you know, the goal. But we, we need a win. I mean, conceding a lot of goals lately where we shouldn't really be conceding them, which is frustrating for me. But we do get off to a good start just before halftime or get off, finish the first half really, really nicely. Spread it out wide. Nanny, who's been uh, really down in the dumps the last couple of weeks, slots it in back there, and it is in the back of the net again. So we are off to a win in ways if we can just hold on against Wigan. But yeah, time will tell, lads. Time will tell. Look what it means to Bubba. He's mad for a bit of silverware this season. Half time. Is there going to be drama till the end? Because we have got a 2 1 lead for Southampton there. But we're going to end it there, and we'll be back with the last episode, episode 13 where we will have the end of this match and we will have fixture 38, a roundup of the season and I will talk to you later lads. Hope you're enjoying it.